what about the location of the resultant force on the inclined surface of the area A? Now, many of you might be tempted to think that it's going to be equal to the centroid, okay? Well, upon doing further calculations, that is not the case, okay? And for us to find the location of the resultant force, we need to take another step, which I would invite you to welcome me because, it, you know, it's quite interesting and also test some of your calculus, okay? So if you just want the direction and the magnitude, you can stop right here, but if you're interested in knowing the location, just stay tuned, okay? Now, what is the location? Now, I'm going to say this, okay? This area over here, right? We have a small force DF that's acting on this point over here, okay? So, if I were to take moments about the x-axis, okay? The, all the, the moments about the x-axis that's caused by that DF is going to be equal, okay, and DF is acting on DA, remember that. It's going to be equal to the, the center of pressure, okay, for the sake of argument, we'll label it not as the centroid, but as a point over here, center of pressure, CP, okay, multiplied by the resultant force, okay? I repeat again, I want to find the location of the resultant force. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to take moments about the x-axis, and I'm going to equate, okay, the small forces acting on, the small forces DF acting on DA, sum them all out, or the moments caused by the small forces acting on DA, sum them all out and equate it to, okay, the center of pressure, which right now, for the sake of argument, let's just say it's not the same as the centroid, multiplied by the resultant force. Uh, analogous to taking, like, uh, moments about a certain axis. It's just that this time we have introduced the concept of the hydrostatic force. Okay, so what is the, what is the, the statement that we have? Well, we got the moment of the resultant force, okay, where the resultant force is fr is equals to the moment of the distributed, distributed pressure force, okay? Now, you see, the pressure force is distributed among the whole, all the small dfs over here like that, okay? But doesn't matter because we're summing up the individual moments of the distributed pressure force and we're equating that to the moment of the, the resultant force, so the moment of the resultant force, okay? So how are, is our calculations going to be about that, okay? We are doing that about the x-axis right now, right? So we are rotating about the x-axis, so it's logically, we can only find the y-coordinate for now. Later, we'll just reverse the argument to find the x coordinate but let's take moments about the y the x axis sorry to find the the y coordinate of cp okay that would be fr okay which which is the force over here multiplied by yr okay yr is basically the y coordinate of the center of pressure okay which i would label it here it's going to get a bit messy but i hope you bear with me Okay, so basically this is y r, the y coordinate of the center of pressure. Now we're gonna equal z to what would be our integral. Okay, you have to think about it if you're if you want to test your calculus, it would be df okay multiplied by the y distance from the x-axis. Okay, yes, I say again, df multiplied by the y distance of the x-axis because that would give us the moment of that small little pressure, and then obviously we'll sum it all up. Okay, so it's it's gonna be integrate. A, okay, the y-axis, or, okay, I can put df multiplied by the y-axis. Again, df is the small force acting on the area of da, and we just multiply by the y-axis to get that, that individual moment of that small little pressure, and then we'll sum it all up, integrate over that. Okay, now, this one, again, we'll go back to our previous equation over here, okay, where we would express h as sine, th sine theta y. Okay, just basically the geometric trans, um, translation of H and Y, geometric relationship. This would equal to integrate A, okay, we keep the Y, DF, we would substitute this one over here, okay, which would be specific weights, H would be sine theta Y DA. Okay, and then, let's just erase this away, clear some space, okay. So, fr, yr is equal to, bring out the constants, which is the specific weight and sine theta, okay, integrate a, uh, y squared dA. Okay, now, what do we know, again, about our moment of inertia, okay? If you recognize this thing over here, this integral sign over here, we have a certain term for that, okay? Well, this is the y, the first moment of area, okay, which is equals to yc, um, the y coordinate of the centroid multiplied by a, the area, First moment of first moment of area. Okay, first moment of area deals with centroid. 
Whereas this one over here is called the second moment of area. Okay? And the second moment of area is actually equals to, okay, the moment of inertia, okay, and this time it is about the x-axis because we are concerned with the y-coordinate over here. Okay? Now, I'm going to take some time to explain. Okay, I will just maybe, you know, just talk briefly about moment of inertia. Moment of inertia is basically a quantity that describes the, the rotational mass of an object. Okay, and how that works is that we always consider a small little area or volume. Okay, this time we're just dealing with area. So we consider a small little area, and if we're taking it about the x axis, okay, the moments about the x axis, it will be the y coordinate, okay, from the axis squared. We'll multiply that y coordinate squared with that small little area over there. Um, there is a whole principle behind it where we would compare rotational energy with Newton's second law to really get y is it y squared, which I would like to do and I will do, okay? But right now, let's just take it as that. So this one is going to be equals to the second moment of area, or in other words, called the moment of inertia, okay? Moment of inertia. So basically, um, second moment of area is y squared. First moment of area is dealing with centroid or is related to centroid is going to be only y, okay? So... This one, we will just re-express, okay? And we will just uh, find expression for YR, okay? What is YR again? YR is the Y coordinate of the center of pressure. We're dealing with center of pressure right now. Okay, so YR is gonna be equals to specific weight sine theta, the moment of inertia about the X axis, okay? And then we would divide this by FR, but we already have FR, FR is over here, right? Like so. Y H C A. Okay? Now this can cancel over here like that. Okay. Now if you study moment of inertia, there's a there's a theorem called the parallel axis theorem. Quite common and quite easy to show, but for the sake of um, this topic, I'll just quickly show it now without proof. Okay. The moment of inertia about the x-axis or of a certain of a certain axis, okay, is equal to the moment of inertia of the same axis rotated about the same axis, but this time it's located at the centroid over here plus, okay, the area A and YC squared, okay, where YC is the distance from this axis to the axis of the centroid, or the axis passing through the centroid, um, that's YC. On the diagram, what this means is that if I want to take the moment of inertia about this axis over here, which is what I'm doing, which is what I'm doing over here, like so, right, I will just simply create another axis passing through the centroid, okay, which I don't want to mess up the diagram, but it's basically this axis over here, okay? It's the moment of inertia of this area A about this axis, okay, plus the area of the A, okay, multiplied by YC squared. YC squared is basically going from this axis to the axis of the passing through the centroid, which is YC labeled over here. Square that and then add them all up. Okay, so basically now we're just going to substitute this one over here like so, right? So um, the Y coordinate of the center of pressure is going to be sine theta, Okay, and it will be one x one uh, moment of inertia by x axis at the centroid plus okay the area of the y coordinate of the center uh, centroid okay multiplied that divided by okay h c. Now I know what my mistake was okay because I need to re uh, rewrite h c okay. So let's just erase this whole lot over here okay and just let's finish this calculation up okay y r is equals to, okay, sine theta, moment of inertia about the x-axis passing through the centroid plus area times by the, the y coordinate of the centroid squared, okay, I'm going to divide that by hc, hc, what do we know, is y sine theta, or yc sine theta multiplied, uh, multiplied by a, the area a, okay, so the sine theta here can cancel, the sine theta here can cancel, so I would get, okay, 1, I, moment of inertia about x axis passing through the centroid divided by the y coordinate of the centroid multiplied by the area plus, okay, this will cancel out with this, this will cancel out this, this will cancel out this, plus yc, okay? That is very interesting, okay, because this is a relationship comparing the y coordinate of the center of pressure, which is given over here, with the y coordinate of the centroid, which is given over here. Now, I drew it in such a way where you can see that yr is greater than yc. Well, that is certainly to be the case because notice that this value over here is always positive. 
Moment of inertia about the x-axis passing through the centroid positive divided by a positive quantity is positive. So this means that the resultant force, okay, acting on an arbitrary shape a like so, okay, the location of that force is gonna be deeper down the plane part uh, compared to the centroid. You see, the centroid is over here, but the 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 point center of pressure at which the resultant force, the hydrostatic force, is acting on the area over here is gonna be past that. Okay, as you can see over here, because this is more than zero, like like so. It also shows that the the uh, center of pressure it does not equal to the centroid as many of us think.